we are going to have Anita Baker is going to come up right now, and she is going to teach you about making um, evaporated milk and condensed milk from your um, food storage milk, right and how to make delicious cheesecake from that. So, oh, yes, you do. They try to get away from not using the mic. <laughs> silly, silly. But it takes only, uh, in fact, if you make this, 
just leave it in your blender. It, blend it for a minute, minute and a half, when you're making your uh, evaporated, I mean your sweetened condensed milk. Then, then all you have to do is, let's see, you have to, um, I think what I did. Oh, a thing of cream cheese. Or, if you have your, <laughs> if you made your cream cheese, <laughs> then eight, eight ounce, one cup, add a third of a cup of lemon juice and a, a teaspoon of vanilla. Blend it uh, probably two minutes and you pour it in your already prepared crust and put the topping that you like on you. Um, most of this stuff, if you do put it in, if you keep it in your storage, um, um, have, usually has about a, at least a year, when you say a year, but um, I have a tendency to push it to the back and then <laughs> when I go and suddenly there's evaporated milk and I open it up and it's all, so I make my own. Yes? No, I haven't. I, you might be able to if you could figure it out, you know, how much water to put with the, to make the butter. Yes, I am. Uh oh, okay. undo me. <laughs> okay, next we're going to have Emily Torgerson come up and she's going to teach us about flavoring yogurt that you just learned how to make. And we get to taste some of that delicious cheesecake in a few minutes.
So, I already made my text last mix because I thought you'd be bored with that process. <laughs> because all it is is, well, I doubled the recipe. So it's a half a cup of flour, half a cup of powdered milk, and I used regular, not instant, a half a cup of powdered butter, and some chicken bouillon, and some pepper. I think that's all that's in it. And so I am now, in here I have three cups of water. And so I'm just going to mix it in. I already, um, I already heated up my water. Because I'm using regular milk, I want to put it in warm water. If I put it in cold water, it makes it clumpy. So I'm putting it in warm water, and I'm just putting it in, and I'm just going to mix it in really quick. It just takes literally minutes to make this. So all I did was dump it in, I'm mixing it up in the water, it's starting to bubble, which I know you can't see, and it's smelling really good actually. So now I'm using a whisk, so that helps get all the lumps out. And pretty much my white sauce is done already. It's nice and thick. And now I'm going to add into it um, some just Parmesan cheese, a really cheap kind. And I knew I should have brought extra water and I did it. It's a little too thick for me. Okay, so see it thickened up so fast. And then I'm adding in. Um, real bacon bits, I don't know if you know what those are, so I bought them. I buy them in this size from Costco or Sam's Club. I love them. They're part of my food storage because they're real bacon bits. Mm -hmm. And they can, they're shelf stable, but I take them home and throw them in my freezer so they last a long time. And then I also brought, I forgot to show you, bring, these are just um, dehydrated tomatoes from my garden that I just broke up into little pieces to make dried tomatoes. And I'm just going to mix that in. And then, as soon as that's mixed in, I'm just going to dump in my, or mix in my, um, my pasta. And I pre-cooked the pasta just because I thought you'd be bored watching that cook too. <laughs> so it's just bow tie pasta. It's one of my husband's favorites. And I thought it would be really fun and easy to be able to, um, to be able to let you taste it. But that's it. That's the whole meal. It's so fast. It's so easy, and it's a it's a little too thick. So I'm adding a little more water to it. But um, it's so thick and it's so easy, and it's perfect for even like your your 90 day supply stuff, your seven to arctic kinds of things, because it makes it so fast and it's so easy. It's just a few ingredients, and you could actually measure them out and you know put them in a bag because all the stuff that we use in here is all long term storage stuff. Well. The bacon's not so much long term, but. Okay, so that's it. And then I'm just going to add the bobo Thai pasta in, and then you're going to get to eat it, and it's delicious. Oh, wait, one more thing I'm going to add in that I forgot about. I made some, I made up some of the um, freeze dried mozzarella cheese. I'm going to mix that in too so you can taste what that's like too. Okay, that's it. I'm all done. I'm just going to mix it up, and you guys are going to get to taste it. It's all going to fit in there. Okay. <laughs> the cookie lady's on. This is Kim Harvey. She's our new state young women's director for yeah. girls camp. Yes, we're very excited. I'm sure she's excited. Super excited. Tips 
that I figured out as I was making this recipe that I'll show you. And plus, I'm just going to go through it real quick, actually make it so that you guys can see how fast it is. Um, first of all, I think you guys have the recipe for the mix in your information, but you don't have all the cookie recipes yet to go with it. Debbie's going to send that out in her email. There's 24 cookie recipes to go with it. So rather than printing out four pages of cookie recipes, she's just going to put them on her email. Um, so first thing, Crisco is not cheap. And I, I have been buying it um, in the cubes because it's easy. And it costs twice as much to buy it in the cubes. But I hate to put it into a measuring cup, smash it all in, try and get it out. I hate that. So what I've been doing is using my scale. If you don't have a kitchen scale, it's really a good thing to get in your kitchen. All you have to do is put the bowl, put whatever you want to measure in, in it, zero it out. So now it says zero on the scale. And then three cups. I know this because on the package where it comes in the three little bars, that's three cups, it's 20 ounces of Crisco. So, and I wash my hands, um, 20 ounces of Crisco is going in here. It's almost half a can. You do kind of have to know that 16 ounces is a pound on my scale because you need um, one pound, four ounces. So that's my 20 ounces of Crisco, way easier than putting it into a measuring cup and doing it that way. Um, I already measured out 10 cups of flour. Now I have a confession to make. I measured out the flour and then as I was walking out the door, I grabbed the sugar to bring more flour. <laughs> so you're going to put in four cups of sugar and then your light brown sugar. Two cups of packed light brown sugar is a whole box. So that's easy. Put that whole box in. Um, the recipe also calls for egg powder, powdered eggs, and powdered vanilla. Um, now, you do not have to do that. If you want to do it for food storage, that's obviously the easiest thing to do. And if you're already well into your food storage and you have it, then that's, a, then that's great. Um, I am demonstrating it with fresh eggs and, for, and real regular vanilla. Um, also, this, I have a KitchenAid mixer and it does not fit all of this. So obviously, you're not going to want to do that in a mixer. It's way too much. And if I were at home making this for myself, my clean hands, in fact, you're not even going to be eating this, but um, clean hands are the best tool to use. So you just mix it with your hands. Have, who, have you made biscuits before mm -hmm. like this? So you know that if you make biscuits, you know it gets to a crumbly texture and it looks like a really fine crumb, and that's the texture you're going to want. It actually is going to end up looking like this. Now, um, this is my other big tip for this recipe. Which I did wrong. <laughs> yeah. Figure, Debbie called me and she said, the recipe is all wrong. It is like twice as much water as what is in the recipes, um, the ones that you don't have. It says in every recipe to add about two to three tablespoons of water. And she was saying, you need to double that. So I could, I, you know, I tried it myself and I figured out, I think, what she did. When you measure out dry ingredients, especially a, something like this that has brown sugar in it, when you push your scoop, your measuring cup, into it and pull it out, it packs it down and you get way more cookie mix than you're supposed to have for the recipe that you're going to do. So what you want to do, I didn't bring another spoon, you just want to fluff it up, you want to have a fluffy
healthy mixture if it's been stored in your cabinet. And then lightly pile it, scoop it into your measuring scoop. I'm making a mess here, Debbie. That's okay. That's what I'm going to lay the <laughs> So that's one cup. All right, so you're doing it lightly in there, and then you're going to have the perfect measurement. I'm going to need that one. So, oh, she said we could leave that bottle of water there. The first one I'm going to show you how to make are the lemon poppy seed. So I really liked those. I thought that they were they were my favorite. I think. So three cups of mix. I'll show you how easy this is. So that that wasn't hard to do the mix. First of all, now to make lemon poppy seed cookies, which are kind of some of the fancier ones in the recipes. Oh, and this is a change I'm making too. When you get the recipes, maybe I'll have Debbie change in the recipe. Okay. The recipe says to use lemon zest, lemon extract, and water. So I thought, why would you use lemon extract and water when you have a perfectly good lemon, obviously, if you're using lemon zest? So, if you're doing food storage and you don't have a perfectly good lemon, you would omit the lemon zest and just use the lemon extract. But, since it calls for lemon zest, obviously. So, I'm just using a fine microplane grater. You all know how to zest a lemon, right? You just get off the dark yellow part. You don't go down to the white because the white's bitter. I'm not talking too loud. I forget I have a microphone. You're doing fine. Don't want to be blowing all your ear guns. Okay. Just a lemon. And then, put that in there. That's important. Maybe a pocket knife. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're also going to do two teaspoons of poppy seeds. I bought this huge, I'm never going to use all these poppy seeds, ever. So many poppy seeds in this thing, but it was cheaper to buy this than the little thing of poppy seeds. So even though I'm going to have these the rest of my life, this is the way I bought them. Depends on how many cookies you make. Yeah. <laughs> or poppy filled something or other, huh? All right. This is another thing. You guys don't have one of these. They're wonderful. I think you can even get them at Wayne Cove, they're cheaper. You cut the lemon in half, put it in there, squeeze it. These are kind of dry lemons. And that's all the liquid you need for the cookie. And that is it for the lemon pop and some cookies. Lemon juice. Oh, the egg. Oh, it's dry. Okay. Since we're not using powdered egg, we put sugar like. Okay, Debbie, do you really want me to show another recipe? Then they all get the idea of how mix works. Yeah, you all get how mix works. <laughs> okay, so she told you about the rest, the cookies that are back there. The other cookies that are back there are ones that I did, and they have powdered egg and powdered vanilla in them. Mm -hmm. What you want to get used to doing is substituting. Because the recipe you're getting has powdered egg in it, but if you don't have powdered egg, you just don't put the powdered egg in. And instead of um, adding water to your mix, you're just going to add one egg for every, if, you're, if the recipe says two, and a, two to three tablespoons of water, that means one egg. That's how much liquid is in about one egg. So you're just going to put in one egg instead of that, and you'll put in one teaspoon of vanilla. The recipes that you're getting, though, I think they're written for for powder, for eggs, to use eggs, are they not? So because I put, when I follow the recipe and put an egg and two tablespoons of water, that, or lemon juice in this case, this is the consistency I got, like a perfect cookie dough consistency. So if you use powdered eggs, you know, you, you would know what kind of consistency you'd want for cookie dough. But um, if you use powdered egg, then you can just add a couple more. 
But I, I generally think that this. See, so if you didn't, if I, because I didn't add egg, that's why I needed twice needed the extra water. Yeah, that would be it too. Okay. <laughs> I don't know specific on this recipe. It's a quarter cup of powdered egg for this whole thing bowl of cookie mix. For a quarter cup of egg powder. So, um, and then it works out to just one egg per recipe. I don't know how that doesn't seem like an egg powder. I know, but my recipe. I was going to try that, but the cookies all came out really good, and you even can make brownies from this mix. And I found they you'll you'll you get to try them back there. They're too cakey for me, so when I make them again, in fact, I changed the recipe to be a quarter cup of oil and a quarter cup of water instead of just water, so it'll be a little bit moister. So. And the ones that I made when you do the tasting, um, the top are <coughs> chocolate mint, and that recipe just has a quarter cup of cocoa powder added. And I use the Andes bits, like Andes mince bits. And um, then there's chocolate chip cookies, and then the lemon poppy seed. So there's lots of cookies for you to try, because I made four other kinds back there, plus the brownies. So you get to try a lot of the different ones that came in the mix, yeah. Um, I'm allergic, so are, do any of them have all the kinds? Not in mine. One of mine has nuts in it, but I don't remember which one it is, so I'll let me think. The brownies don't have nuts in them. I think it's the spice ones have nuts in them. The other ones don't. Okay, all mine are nut free. Okay, oh yeah, and another tip if you don't have eggs, you can use unflavored gelatin instead of your eggs. Oh. And I actually, grew, when I was growing up, sometimes we didn't have eggs, and I'd make cookies or whatever without the eggs, and it still came out fine. So, you could probably live without the eggs and then find some extra oil. Huh? You can add some extra oil. Add some extra oil, yeah. How long will that mix? How long will the mix last? Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's three to six months. And if you put it in. If you have uh, a well, probably three months on the shelf, six months in the icebox. Mm -hmm. Or you can just throw it in the freezer, too. Because everything in it, Crisco, is shelf-stable. Yeah. Everything in it is shelf-stable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Yes. Is that to dehydrate? You can dehydrate them. Oh. You can actually just slice them and dehydrate the whole thing and make lemonade. Oh, you know what? It wouldn't work for cookies, but I've also seen them preserve lemons with salt. Right? Yeah. Preserve or boil them in like the sugar and water and you can can them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nasty. Okay, that's good. Any questions? Do you like that? Next year we're going to do a whole class just on mixes. Mm. It's going to be so fun. I'm getting excited. Okay. So that's all um, for the milk and cookies part of the class. Now we're going to have a about 15 minute break and you're going to go back and taste all the delicious foods, the melts, the cookies, the cheesecake. There's, we made a, um, it was supposed to be a soup for some reason. It came out more like a casserole, but it tastes really good. It's a chicken, lemon, Mediterranean. It's really delicious. So we have that. Um, and we have the bow tie pasta and the yogurt and oh and ice cream. So we have chocolate ice cream and vanilla ice cream and none of those have nuts in them. I just knew. <laughs> but chocolate does have little toppy pieces. They look kind of like nuts, but they're not. So we'll bring all that out in a minute. I think it might take us a minute to get it out because it's not all out here yet. So just give us a minute, we'll get it all back there. But is there any other questions? Yeah. Got a couple. Uh, nutritional value of your milk. What is that probably like protein and calcium and fat or what what's Read the, the back of your label. Because okay. every milk is a little bit different. Um, it has a lot I mean all the nutritional value that's in regular milk is in the same as in your powdered milk. So <coughs> in the um, drying process if you lose vitamin D and vitamin D, that's why most of them have that added back in. 
Go in the sun, you big right. And another question. Uh, yeah. if, let's say that your milk has changed the flavor because of the environmental factors. Uh -huh. If used for cooking, is it actually noticeable in what you cook? Or? It depends on what you're cooking. Like if you're making a white sauce, you're probably going to notice. If you make like I did tonight was a white sauce with the Parmesan cheese, you probably can get away with it. And when I talked to um, Emily's mom this morning, when they they made two batches of, well, she actually made three batches of the yogurt. The first batch she burned, which she told you. The second batch they made from old milk. And um, Karen really didn't like it, but Emily, when she put you know, the jam in it, she really couldn't tell the difference. So, and then she made a new batch. I think you're getting a new batch. But just depending on how you're dressing up, you're going to be able to tell what you can get away with and what you can't. If you're just making this plain milk, you're probably going to be able to notice. Put some chocolate in it, you probably will notice. Yeah. I had some old milk that um, had a sour taste. Uh huh. It was excellent in baked goods. Oh, see? It'd be like buttermilk. Yeah. So that's good. So there's lots of things you can use it for. I'm, I've even heard you can. Use it in your garden for fertilizer. So I don't know that I would do that. Just take care of your milk and try to you know rotate it. With when you learn how to use the mixes, it's a lot easier to rotate your milk. And if you're not you know using it drinking, I when I cook with milk, I use powdered milk. When I make oatmeal, I use powdered milk because it's just really easy to do it that way. And I don't now that I have no kids left. Only my mother drinks milk. She's like a huge milk cheese person. And um, so she gets her little thing of milk every other week. But for me, I just use the powdered milk. And I have instant and regular in my kitchen, depending on what I'm doing. So that's all. Any other questions? You guys are good. You're going to love the food. There's so much of it. So I hope you're hungry. Mm -hmm. OK, we're going to take a little break and set up for the earthquake class. And we were supposed to have a meter, but I guess it didn't make it. So you're not going to get to play with that tonight. But we do have a little display from CERT over here, from the CERT, my son took the CERT class, and that's when he got my team CERT class, so you can check that out. And we'll get set up with everything else, and then you can go taste.